So in this video, we're going to learn how to send a post request from the web browser to an endpoint. So if I go here, I've created my endpoint and hook bin. The way you do that is you just go to hook bin and create new endpoint. It's pretty easy to do. So we can just copy this endpoint from here. And we're just going to create a URL called, we're going to create a variable called URL. And it'll just store the URL that we're going to post to. Next, we'll create another variable for our form. We only have one form here. So we'll just call this form EL. EL stands for element. We'll say document.querySelector form. Next thing we'll do is we'll add an event listener to our form. And this will uh, respond to submit events. So whenever the form gets submitted, this uh, anonymous function will get called. Next thing we'll do is we'll prevent default. And what that will do is it will prevent the uh, form from submitting to the action attribute. So if this form had an action attribute, which it doesn't, which is basically like action equals HTTP, blah, 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 it would go to that page. Since it doesn't, it will just submit to itself. So prevent default prevents that from happening. So I'll show you what happens. I'm just going to alert here. And you might have to study this a little bit or rewind. But I'm click submit. It does alert, but it also refreshes the page. So you can see that quick refresh thing. So we want to prevent that. So prevent default will do that. You can see it's no longer refreshing the page or submitting the form data to the page. Next thing we want to do is we want to create um, the, a form data object. So we're going to say new form data equals form el and this will serialize helps help us serialize the form now we want to uh, get what we're storing in the form so we'll just call this form data uh, serialized and we'll just say objects dot from entries and I got this function from right here so you can see this just will serialize like any object so that's like an example so you just pass it in so you just say from entries and then you say form data so let's console dog log that and see what form data serialized equals just so we can see what we're getting so I'm going to inspect element I'm going to go to console click that and yeah that looks good uh, comments and all that stuff okay so one thing you'll notice is that if we click the checkbox this gets uh, this sometimes is there sometimes isn't so we need to standardize that so let's go ahead and do that so we'll say form so we'll say const uh, JSON object equals dot 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 form data serialized and then we're going to override send to self and that just comes from this name right here in our input send to self and we're going to set that equal to form data serialized dot send to self so if that equals anything so that equals one we're going to say true if it doesn't we're going to say false and let's console.log that. Make sure that we're doing this right. So now, hopefully, send to self is false and send to self is true. So, yeah, that's looking good. Now we get to do the fetch part, which is the fun part. <laughs> so, we want this function to actually be async. I forgot to do that. And the reason is, is that fetch is an async function. So, we don't know how long it's going to take for the server to respond. So, so JavaScript gives us this really handy thing where we can do a try catch. So basically if something goes wrong, it goes into the catch, but we'll try it first. So we'll say const response, and then we'll wait the fetch request. And now we can just pass in our URL. But we also have to pass in some options. So the first one is method, and that one we're gonna that one's post. Then we're gonna type body, and we want to do JSON dot stringify and we want to pass in our JSON object now we want to do headers and you want to do content type and we want 
to set that equal to application JSON just to let the server know that they're supposed to get JSON and yeah so that should do it there and then we'll just do another a way to get the response back and this server will only send success so we'll say uh, await response dot JSON and then we'll just console dot log the response if it fails for whatever reason we'll just do a console dot log dot error and we'll do um, we'll do uh, an alert yeah there was an error now you can make this a lot, lot nicer if you want but that's up to you so let's go ahead and try that out so I'm gonna say put my name in change the age test and send to self and we did get success true so if we go to our thing and we got a refresh but that's not a big deal you can see what we sent so we sent this, which is pretty cool. And you can see our header to content type application JSON. So I'm going to send it without the send to so we can see that. So now if I do a refresh again, go down to the second one. To do true? Oh, that's weird. Let's try it again. I wonder if I did something wrong. Oh no, so the newer ones go on top. That's my fault. That actually makes sense too from a UI standpoint. So that's working. So let's test the error case because it's always important to test the error case. So I'm going to go HTTP example.com. So this should definitely fail. And let's make sure that we get an alert. Yeah. And you can see the error and all that stuff. So, yeah, that definitely failed pretty bad. <laughs> okay, so that's how you make a uh, post request uh, with a form in uh, JavaScript. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll catch you on the flip side.